Are you ready to conquer your financial goals for 2023? Dive into our ultimate budgeting guide for beginners. Learn the simple steps of making a budget from scratch, save more, and pave your way to financial success. Let's make this year the best one yet. All right, guys, so here we are over on nerdwallet.com. I'll put a link down to this below so you can follow along. Free budget planning worksheet. Now, this is something that I utilize on a regular basis. Once you get this all set using the 50-30-20 rule, you can actually download this yourself. Um, that way you do have it. It is editable and you can change it, guys. So budget planner, again, this is based on the 50-30-20 rule. We've talked about this quite a bit, but you have to create a budget that works for you. That is one of the absolute most important things, guys. So monthly budget worksheet on a monthly basis coming in here and updating this. Now you can see, check all that applied. This is going to be very different depending on what stage of life you're in. For me, I am a parent, I am a homeowner, I am not a senior, I am not in college or checking none of the above. This is going to unlock different parts within the spreadsheet we're gonna use. That way you can check it out and see exactly what you're looking at. The wages after tax. Now this is not the gross income. This is actually the take home after tax. We're gonna use some nice round figures in here. So we're gonna put 4,000 after taxes that we're bringing home. Other could be your side gig, could be YouTube, could be DoorDash, anything that is going to bring additional monthly income. And again, looking at the gross amount or looking at the net amount that you're bringing home. If you get child support or alimony, if you have a rental property, this is the place to plug in every single penny of income, which of course is going to be pivotal as we move through this worksheet. Now looking through the needs. Now these are the needs. These are the priorities. These are the number one 50% of the bucket that we're looking for when you look at the budgeting worksheet. Rent, let's just say it's $1,500. Um, property tax bill, we're not gonna pay because we are just renting a place for $1,500. Health insurance premium, for a lot of people, it might be put here, but for a majority of us, it is going to be included prior to your actual take-home income. So when you look at your gross, a lot of times your health um, or your insurance is going to be taken out of there. Life insurance premiums, if you do have any additional life insurance premiums, you can put them in here as well. So let's say we pay $50 a month for life insurance premiums that are outside of what is provided from my employer. Now looking at a water bill, again, we're kind of renting. Grocery and other essentials. This is when you're going to Kroger, when you're going to Myers, when you're going to Sam's Club, when you're going to BJ's, when you're going to get groceries and other essentials, such as personal needs, um, personal hygiene needs, this is where you're gonna put everything, guys. Now, you might be wondering where you get this number. You can really do it one of two ways. Um, number one, you can go back to previous statements. So an interesting little thing that you can do, go back and look at your statements for the last three months, see exactly what you have in there. If you have your groceries adding up to, let's say, four or $500, you're doing pretty good. If you, again, take the average of a couple months, you'll have a much better idea. Once you put in a number in the budget, for budgeting reasons, I'm just gonna put 600 in here. You will, again, adjust this on a monthly basis to exactly what you're spending based on the groceries. So you can kind of track month over month what exactly you're spending, and also when those needs are going to be a little bit higher in a, in a month that is upcoming, you can adjust them as needed. Parking registration fees you could have as well if you do have to pay to park. Some places, again, if you're going to school, you do have to. Gasoline, we're gonna put $100 here. Phone bill, if you're like me with Verizon, we pay roughly $100 a month. Minimum student loan payments. Now remember, these are the minimums. You wanna make sure that you're putting that in. If, of course, it's income rebase, based repayments, if it's in forgiveness, if it's in deferment, you're not gonna put anything right now, but you might wanna go ahead and preemptively put something in here, knowing that the budget could change dramatically when you're going through and when you actually do have to pay those, which could make a big, big dent in your budget. We have seen student loan payments, $300, $500, $1,000 per month for student loan payments. And of course, they are going back into the payment phase. So we're not gonna put anything there, guys. Child support and alimony, if you do have to pay it, diapers. Now, this is pretty interesting. Both of my kids, great are out of diapers at this point. But when you look at a box of diapers, it is 40 to $50, so it is pretty expensive. Tuition, education fees. Now we do put aside $300 per month to go ahead and do tuition for my kids. I know they are still a little bit younger, but we are setting aside X amount of dollars in an MESP program. That way we can make sure that we are saving. Tuition, test, test, um, college prep. Again, you can put something in there. Homeowners Association, we pay 360 or 360 a month 
So we'll just put $30 so we have our 360 covered for 12 months. $30 a month is going to go in there. Now, some of the other things that you might not be thinking, renters or homeowners insurance, that is included in the mortgage, so I'm not gonna put anything here. Um, auto insurance premiums, this is if you are paying auto insurance. Now for us, we pay about $80 a month for the cars, which is really good. Now out of pocket medical costs, now this could be mental medical costs, this could be dental costs. For me personally, I put $150 every single month into an HSA account. We do have a high deductible healthcare plan where I work, which means setting aside money for that HSA plan is going to make a difference and we do need it built into the budget. Electricity, natural gas runs about 120 a month. Garbage, we pay $37, I think it is, um, $37 in total. Car payment, for us is zero. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting, guys. When you look at car maintenance, when you look at repairs, there again is kind of two ways you can look at this. Number one, you could be pre-saving for maintenance and repairs. This could make a really big difference if you're not looking to possibly um, repair your car or getting a new car, things of that nature. So car maintenance and repair, you know what? I'm gonna put a hundred bucks in here. Even though I may not be paying for it during the month, I am generally, I know I'm gonna need tires. I know I'm gonna need oil changes. I know there might come to a point where I am going to need repairs on this car. If I'm budgeting it for a monthly basis, this is going to give me $1,200 per year towards maintenance and repairs, which again, we can kind of reallocate based on what exactly we're saving. Public transit, I do not have. Internet bill is $100 through Xfinity every single month. Minimum loan payments, we do not have any. Nanny daycare costs, this is probably about $40. Bottles, other supplies, school supplies, home maintenance and repair. Again, similar to what we see for the car guys, we put $100 aside every single month. That is $1,200 aside every year, which means even though we may not have maintenance or repair at this point, if you look, let's say three years in the future, we have $3,600 set aside for the home maintenance and repair. When something does come up, we already have the money set aside, which makes a really big difference. And then other, of course, we're only going through the needs at this point, guys, making an income of $4,000. You can see this is covering 3,400, which leaves us a couple hundred dollars. Again, this is where budgeting gets very, very interesting on exactly what you have, exactly what you can spend and where you can make up the difference. Because again, as we scroll down a little bit further, we still have our 50, 30, 20 rule. 50% of our income should be going to our total um, necessities, which of course, for a majority of us, if you're looking at a budget, guys, if this number is much higher, that is again of our 4,000 income, you're talking almost the 50% of the 50, 30, 20 rule is going to rent, which means theoretically we need a much cheaper place to live or we need to cut out some of our other expenses because you're gonna realize quickly within this budget, guys, that we are going to be very, very high over budget. Now, looking at clothing jewelry, again, this is a place where you might not be buying clothing and jewelry every single week, you might not be doing it every single month, but there is going to be a point where you're going to need clothing and jewelry, similar to dining out, similar to you know special meals at home, movie tickets, this is where you can kind of adjust with the budget. So even here we have Planet Fitness, it's $20 a month, cable streaming package. On average in the United States, guys, Americans spend $207 on um, subscriptions every single month, which is kind of crazy. Looking at subscriptions, looking at cable services, looking at streaming. So when you add in Hulu, when you add in Disney, when you get um, you know Netflix, we can say, let's say another $50 in there. Jewelry, we can just put in, again, kind of playing around with a couple numbers. Concert, movie tickets. Set aside money for what you love to do. If every year I like to go to a concert, if once a month I like going to a movie, we can set $20, $20 aside for a movie every single month. Home decor, birthdays, furniture. Again, you can kind of preemptively save money within your budgeting. That way you don't have to go through here and um, really upset or throw the budget out the window when anything really changes. The total spent was 110. And again, our budget is getting really, really tight, guys. As you can see down here, we're far outside of the norms on the needs and the wants. And then of course, it comes to the debt repayment and the savings. 401k contributions, they're actually going in pre-tax, 
which means the take home that we're using, the 4,000 take home that we're using, um, is already including the 401k or, or it is excluded in there. Emergency fund contributions, we're gonna put 20 bucks in here till we get our built up IRAs or individual retirement accounts we're not working about or worrying about right now because we are putting a significant amount into the 401k contributions, other investments, and then you get into the repayment phase, guys, which again, we're probably gonna have to go back, look at some of this budget, really break it down and see where we can cut and where we can save some of this money. Looking in here, again, getting into the credit card repayments, excess payments on student loans, excessive payments on the mortgage. This is above and beyond if you do have additional funds that are available. When it comes to the budgeting, again, a lot of part that gets squeezed is those exponential expenses where let's say a credit card payments, you're paying $150 a month towards a credit card. You're not moving the balance on there, unfortunately, very much at all. Student loan payments, we're just gonna stick with the not having the student loans. Excessive on the mortgage, paying down the principal. College savings, again, that's what we have for the savings for the kids, which we can actually change the bucket that we have that because we're no longer putting the tuition and education fees and there it is going into our college savings, which brings us to a total of really not much at all, guys. You can see we're at 30, um, we're at what, 31, four, five, six. We're at about 3,800, which still again gives us kind of a leeway. Um, total to the 50, 30, 20 comparison, you can see the needs far exceed again because of rent. And again, I just use kind of the general rule because right here, just north of Detroit, Michigan, rent runs around 12 to 14 to 1600 dollars. So I just kind of use the average of what we're seeing for apartment rent in the area, which again means these needs are going to have to be adjusted. We're going to have to see exactly where we can save money going through this budgeting. Now, Tracking your expenses are easy. Throw it away. You can put it out on paper. Also, like I said earlier, you can download the spreadsheet, guys, over on nerdwallet.com. I'll put the link down below. It is really, really efficient to use something like this because, again, you have to make sure that you budget on a monthly basis, guys. It really does make a difference on where you're playing with these numbers and sitting down and going over this again on a monthly budget is going to make a really big difference, especially when you have life events or things that change. All right, guys, so that'll do it for the very basic budget. Again, this is such an amazing tool that you can use over on nerdwallet.com that you can break down the budget depending on what status and where you are in life, breaking down your income, seeing exactly what you can do, whether it is working some extra hours, picking up a side gig, things of that nature, to really balance out that budget, or where can you eliminate some of the costs in your life as well as cutting out some of those expenses, cutting out some of the debt, some of the credit card debt, and really paying that down. Now, my challenge to you guys is go through your statements. You will be absolutely shocked. This is actually a practice that we used in my master's program when I did my finance. Um, they broke it down into a three-month breakout. So what we did was we brought in three months of bank statements. We broke down every single thing into the budget that you see right here, breaking it into its own category, took the average and seen exactly what goals we had financially, where we landed when it came to the budget itself, and how we can improve personally and professionally to really budget. So all right, guys, again, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.